The ferry company received $3 million from the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. The ferry plans to match the funds, putting together $6 million to bring the first electric ferry to Michigan. Up North Live's Josh Kerman breaks down the timeline and how Mackin Island Ferry Company plans to go green moving forward. Mackinac Island Ferry Company has been working on getting the grant for nearly two years, but the idea to go green has been in the works for a long time. As a company, we've committed to go green uh, several years ago. A lot of our service vehicles on our docks are electric now as well, and we're slowly converting uh, those over as well to electricity. Fetty says the grant will focus on two main things. The first is replacing diesel engines on the Chippewa Ferry with electric motors, and the second is installing a 1.5 megawatt charger at the Mackinac City Dock. The first step in the grant is to get the charging station over in Mackinac City. And then after that first step, then we'll work on getting it over here in St. Ignace and then eventually on the island too. The island uh, has some needs for infrastructure and power, so we don't plan on having anything over there for a while. Fetty expects work to begin right away, but the longest part of the process is yet to start. The total project will take about two to three years. A lot of the beginning of the project is us working with the you know authorities and regulators to basically get the approval to do everything that we need to do on the boat, making sure you know everything is engineered to be perfectly safe uh, for out there on the straits. And uh, that, that part will take probably actually the longest to get all of that through. Half of the funding for this project comes from the Fuel Transformation Program, an Eagle grant working with the My Healthy Climate Plan to make Michigan carbon neutral by 2050. You know, one of the things we want to do is we prioritize climate action in Michigan. It's important to uh, avert some of the worst impacts of climate change through our My Healthy Climate Plan. So this is all part of a, a larger plan to get Michigan where it, uh, where it needs to be in terms of uh, uh, climate action. The other part of the FTP second phase grant brings more than $2 million to Sault Ste. Marie for electric shore power at one of their international docks. Fetty says if all goes well, it's not unrealistic to say someday all of their ferries could be powered by electricity or another alternative fuel. In Mackinac County, Josh Kerman, Up North Live News. And these two projects make up the bulk of the second phase grants from Eagle. But there is a third phase of grants of up to $5 million. Eagle's accepting applications until November 1st of the year. I'm new at five. A man charged with murdering a South Bend security guard was arraigned this afternoon for his alleged role in that case and another criminal case. 33-year-old Derek Pratcher was taken into custody in St. Joseph County Friday after being transported from Cass County, Michigan. But he also faces a battery charge that happened the day before the alleged murder. WSBT 22's Erica Fingia joins us from outside the courthouse right now. Erica Pratcher appeared virtually with several other defendants. And Jennifer, he was polite with the magistrate as the magistrate was, there was a little bit of confusion as well, but he was polite as the magistrate was explaining some of the charges that he's facing. But I also spoke with the owner of a car dealership whose employee said Pratcher allegedly broke his nose. Derek Pratcher now facing two criminal cases, one for the murder of Robert Pulliam Jr. and firearm related charges on March 5th. Pratcher's prior felony for repeated traffic violations was brought up in court and Pratcher sounded confused, saying, quote, I'm already going to plead not guilty because I didn't do anything to nobody. The magistrate also ordered no contact with the victim from the battery charge from March 4th that was filed after the murder. Court documents allege Pratcher was applying for a loan to buy a 2012 silver Jeep at Justin Motors and was advised he'd have to come back to get the car another day. After the business closed, Pratcher came back and was speaking with an employee that was there at the time. The owner, Justin Christensen, says that's when Pratcher struck the worker in the face. It just hit him so hard. It didn't even, didn't even feel, didn't even know it was coming. It wasn't threatened or anything. And so all of a sudden, was knocked out and looking at the ceiling. Christensen says they provided all Pratcher's information to police the day before the murder, but he wonders if a life could have been saved if police acted on the alleged battery sooner. Maybe that's something that should be looked at because if they would have picked him up Saturday night, could have avoided this murder perhaps. That employee is recovering right now, but uh, these two cases are under two different judges, and so Pratcher will appear between before two different judges in mid-April. Uh, he is being appointed a public defender, although Pratcher said he and his family are looking for an attorney. He was ordered no bond.
While many Michigan residents are still reeling, of course, with the effects of inflation, now they're taking another hit to their wallets as property tax bills are expected to soar this year. News Channel 3's Autumn Pitcher is joining us in studio with an explanation of what this means for taxpayers. Autumn. Andy, homeowners will experience at least a 5% increase when their summer property tax bills arrive in July. This is the highest jump in 28 years, according to Anderson Economic Group, a consulting firm. Michigan homeowners receive an annual notice making them aware of how much their property taxes will be for the year. This year, the number is expected to skyrocket. Since 1994, we've never reached that 5% cap. So now, this is the first year that we've reached that. Patrick Anderson, the CEO of Anderson Economic Group, is urging homeowners to look closely at this new number. Because it's not just a tax increase this year, it's a tax increase for multiple years to come. How much higher taxes you pay depends on where you live. Take Van Buren County, for instance. The average homeowner's taxable value was around $60,000. According to Anthony Meyer, the owner of Assessing Solutions Incorporated, a 5% increase would mean an increase in their tax bill of $90.57 for the year or $7.54 per month. It's a lot of money. So absolutely it's going to affect them. Anderson says taxpayers will feel the weight as the average tax increase could add on hundreds of dollars to their bill. Everything is up right now and this is just one more thing to add to the list of added costs. In 1994, Michigan voters enacted Proposal A, which created a cap taxable values could increase by. Meyer says if it wasn't for this, homeowners could see numbers climb even higher. However, the reason behind property taxes reaching the highest in 28 years, according to Meyer, comes as no shocker, inflation. Inflation is biting property tax owners now. It, it bit us last year and it's really biting us this year. Myron says you can contest your assessment by reaching out to your local assessor's office to set up an appointment for a review. 